A question I get asked quite often by my new viewers is, what's my favorite nation in EU4? If you've been subscribed to this channel for more than two years, you probably already know the answer. It's definitely a tie between Poland and Portugal. Poland because it's the center of a lot of action and you have a lot of challenges, especially in multiplayer. And Portugal because it's an underdog nation that plays uniquely and is considered to be boring colonial gameplay with not that much potential to be that strong in multiplayer. I always thought the idea of a number one strongest nation as Portugal in a stacked MP lobby to be amusing because you really don't see it that often. Usually Portugal is eclipsed by Great Britain and Spain who have better mission trees, ideas, and stronger starts in 1444. It's also funny when you go full colonial focus and turn your normal EU4 MP experience to essentially a standard Hoi 4 MP experience. Imagine we're playing Hoi 4, okay? We have a front line based off of our three cannon stacks. No non cannon stack should be next to by the line or ahead of the cannon stacks, okay? Let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go first. Anyone have gun equipment? 1750 gun equipment? Money, 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 money. But what if we did something different this time? A Portugal build that didn't involve colonies, but did involve colonists. A build that's actually usually banned in most multiplayer lobbies. A build that didn't require competent colonial players in order to win wars. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. Unfortunately, this run was played on the previous patch of EU4 using the infamous Gecko mod, aka the minus social credit mod, but I do really want to play Portugal in the latest EU4 domination DLC. So I'll tell you what, if this video gets at least 100 views, I will play Portugal in my next MP campaign. Not sure if we're going to hit that number guys, so better share this video just to be safe. Before I get into the video, I do want to say that today, the same day that this video comes out, I will be streaming a special EU4 MP 6 hour event with some of your favorite EU4 content creators, because I all know that you guys like Zlewik more than me. How could you? How could you like Zlewik more than me? Anyways, it's today, August 19th, 9 a.m. PST. Here's the other times and other time zones, because some of you guys don't know how to use Google. There you go. Come watch. So what is this forbidden Portugal strat? Now Mr. Beast did tell me that I shouldn't tell you guys the whole point of the video in the beginning of the video and rather I should delay it until the very end after you've watched 12 ads including a paid integration by Honey. But I'm just going to tell you right now. You move your capital to the new worlds, okay but here's the catch, while still keeping your land in Europe and Africa. Now, there's two reasons why you would do this or why it would be beneficial. The first is you don't have to manage colonial players. You get all the colonial land for yourself and it's just Portuguese land. The second is that the new world is broken. And if you watch my latest Great Britain campaign, you'd know that vanilla colonies are really broken for that reason. The New World, it's really great land to dev, really good trade goods, and it's very hard to invade. However, most multiplayer mods, including this one, heavily nerf colonies for that exact reason. They're really broken in vanilla. And usually there's a rule that disallows moving your capital to the New World as a nation in the Old World. However, in the Gecko MP mod, South Africa is considered a colonial region, which means it forms a colonial nation. It also has more provinces. So we could move our capital there and essentially circumvent the rule. Now, is this the best way to play Portugal in multiplayer? Well, that's why you guys are watching this video. To start, we did a quick show strength on Tunis. We were able to finagle this by basically promising Morocco that if he attacked Castile, we wouldn't help Castile. We also made a claim on a province in Galicia, which will be important for later. We did diplomacy, of course, with Castile to give us this province temporarily. We released Galicia and then gave Galicia one province inside our lands, preferably the lowest dev land. We start with an explorer, so we start right away to explore and in the Gecko mod we are able to make explorers and conquistadors by default as Portugal. It's the advantage that Portugal has in the mod since everyone can get colonists and explorers and conquistadors at tech 6 diplo. 
And then we started exploring for the New World cities so we can get those juicy New World events that give us some mana. We made our flagship as soon as possible and we also start colonizing towards West Africa. Next part, I didn't record it because I'm Pepega, but essentially you give land to Galicia in order to be able to move your capital to a colonial region and then you seize land and integrate Galicia as soon as possible. Now that our capital is the new world, we can just develop and build up without having to worry about forming a colonial nation. In this situation, there are no players near us. There's no Zimbabwe, no Congo. Yes, Gecko changes a lot, which is actually why I stopped playing with it recently. If you watch my recent videos and recent games, we haven't been playing with Gecko. It just started changing way too much. Yes, it was optimized and really great for multiplayer and good multiplayer action. However, it just changed way too much to the point where if you didn't know Gecko, it's like a whole nother game. I mean, look at Ottomans, it's just so red. Why is it so red? I do have to say though that most dev cost modifiers and manpower modifiers are nerfed in Gecko. However, domestic trade power is heavily increased, so controlling your trade is a lot easier. You could still do the strat in a vanilla lobby or a vanilla-like mod lobby. All you would have to do is move your capital to Brazil instead of South Africa. We did use the construction cost holy order in all of our lands. I do have to mention though that we are losing money right now since we are colonizing more than we can afford. And in order to not get loans, I was exploiting a little bit because I didn't want to go into a loan economy just yet. We were trying to dev as well as use our newly acquired land in South Africa that we were colonizing. However, the next important thing that we needed to do once we had the colonial range was to start colonizing Brazil. We got the tech six, settle the world. All right, now we need to do Brazil fast. With the Portuguese age bonus of settler increase, we were colonizing quite fast, as well with the bonus of the Treaty of Tortadillas as we were Catholic, obviously. Like this. Click this, that gives us the gold mine here, Minas Garas. This mission also increases the chance of finding gold in Brazil, which is amazing as right now, all we're going to do is just colonize Brazil. All of that land goes directly to us. And with the peaceful colonizing of Brazil, some deving and building buildings, we already reached 100 ducat income just from all of the great provinces we're getting, stacking both age bonuses getting the colonial development. It's kind of crazy how fast our income grew, but you know, without having an, a colony there, all of that D Brazil stuff goes directly to us. You can already see the comments being like, this is just so boring. Well, you know, if Portugal can get the first 50 years doing what I'm doing here without a player war, then yeah, obviously any player could scale this hard. There's actually nothing impressive about doing this. And since we were the first European to get gold outside of Europe, we got the gold modifier on Minas Tirith or Minas Gerat. Sorry, this isn't Lord of the Rings. This is Lord of Portugal. Another important thing to know is this wonder right here in Brazil. When fully upgraded, it gives a flat goods produced modifier in the entirety of Brazil, which is amazing. We ended the first session as the second highest income after England. Are you guys relaxed yet? I'm so relaxed right now. I'm so, oh my god, it's relaxing gameplay. No, none of that inting stuff. Oh! 120 income pre-1500. Like at this point, having enemies, like, it's on the agency of, uh, like uh, Ethiopia player is saying, it's on the agency of them to attack. One. Portugal. Wants peace. Smoil. I don't really have a plan. Uh, I think what we need to do though is build force limit buildings. And we need to build up our army and we need to build up our navy. We basically have to prepare for war even though we're not warring anyone. And that's mostly because uh, we are in a bit of a vulnerable position right now. We have good manpower. We have good income. We have a good monarch, decent monarch point generation um, but uh, I would like to keep waiting my timing my timing I'm a, I'm a big timing guy okay I, I used to play Starcraft 2 I used to play Dota both very big timing games right I love the prestige change by the way excess prestige becoming monarch points very good change paradox um, the timing for Portugal is tech uh, 16 
at tech 16 cannon start having uh, the biggest jump in impact in terms of damage and portugal has artillery fire plus one as its finisher so it's really good to wait ethiopia was now close to being at our border which was a bit concerning but i think at this point we were more than enough prepared what my alliance with golden horde he broke it i think we need to break up it's not you it's me you will never have a an ally like me again and this is why chat spain doesn't kill you look how much money we're bringing in right now and this is money i'm sharing with spain because you know what i'm a good portugal i'm not gonna just hog all this i could just collect here collect here and just stop Port get a little bit more money probably like 10 ducats more and uh, screw my spain but i'm not and this is why you don't kill your portugal because your portugal will end up diverting lots and lots of trade to your capital. I've honestly never had a campaign like this where I was just left alone for such a long period of time. I started getting paranoid and I started building up forts in every single land that I had. Where was I gonna get attacked? I had no idea. Fort to go. As we colonized more, we just started getting more and more money. Who needs yeah, war? Right. <laughs> Who needs war, chat? We're getting army tradition from forts. We don't need army tradition. We're getting them from forts. Our first war. Our first war. Why is his capital right there? Wait, what? Finally, our first conflict. After all these years of building up a worthy adversary. Except he gave up after one battle and gave me what I wanted. Paid actor, 100%. Wait, what? What um, did you say? It's oh, it's a paid actor. Maybe infinite scaling isn't the best. Maybe inting non-stop is the best for content. As a matter of fact, my favorite campaigns are always the ones where I end up going really bad and having to come back. Some people in the lobby were even Let angry at me never for doing this what some strength. thought was a blatant rule break. And in retrospect, I agree with them. I shouldn't have done this strategy. Something Paradox doesn't warn you about playing lots of Portugal games is that something happens in your mind. You start getting the Portugal sickness. Let me play Portugal! Ah! <laughs> They're stopping me from playing! <laughs> the sickness had gone so far that I was doing a greasy build. Who have I become? Listen to this. This is a crazy, out of this world strategy no one has ever done before, ever in the history of this uh, game. Continue to colonize and dev and build buildings. Amazing strategy. This is all in your head. This isn't real, chat. I'm not real. Wake up. Wake up. One zero 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 one 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 zero one zero zero one 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 zero 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 one one zero zero one. One second, before we get into the music, okay? Technically, having colonies is better, but that's if all of your colony players are playing perfectly you have amazing colony players, then yeah, having colonies is better because you have separate mana pools. So if everyone's generating their own mana, you will reach all of your, you and all of your colonies will reach a higher dev. And even if they're bad, they will. The reason why I'm enjoying it more is because you don't have to manage colonial players because, um, you know, you do have to do that. And, and it's the same thing in wars, as you'd probably see if this is on YouTube. You, uh, you already have seen the Spanish campaign, which is a video I'm working on, uh, where I was a colonial power, Spain, because I didn't have a Portugal. I, I didn't have a Portugal, so I decided, okay, I'll just be my own colonial power so I can bring in, you know, power into Sevilla. Like, you can do that as Spain. And it just... It's just like, it's, it, it's, it's tiresome, I guess. It's like playing a shittier version of Hoi, basically. Okay, uh, AI decided to sell me constitu institution. What the heck? I wrote to every someone, someone please sell me institution. No one sold it to me. And AI, I'm now making a probably a one province miner really rich somewhere. <laughs> I love the boat. Something I failed to mention was that the Yao player had 
just fought Ethiopia and was on the verge of bankruptcy, which is why I attacked him. I didn't want Ethiopia just to eat up all of that land, as already I was running out of places to expand in Africa and this was a great opportunity for me to continue growing. Africa was now split up between me, Ethiopia, Spain, and the Ottomans. More green dopamine numbers. It's the end of Portugal. Uh, we never had to use these for it, so I guess it's kind of a blessing. We got to Omega Scale. I just wanted one game where we Omega Scale. And then what? Well, we're about to reach our power spike, so we probably should start a war. We're right now trying to reach like a million manpower and also be naval hedge so we can get the bonus of uh, all 10 power costs and also 15 artillery damage from back row. The next most natural target to attack was Ethiopia. However, he was already scared of the Ottomans and gave me an offer to trade me the Zanzibar trade node for me to help him in a full committal war against the Ottomans. So we sent the Portuguese army through the center of Africa to help out Ethiopia. The Ottomans were by far the strongest nation in this lobby and they were being played by a really good player, Mr. Gecko himself. However, Ethiopia was no joke either, and with our combined armies and my artillery damage, I was thinking that we could actually win some battles and even win the war. Even though we were winning some battles, a majority of them were going the Ottomans way. The worst part is even if we could get out of Ethiopian lands, both me and Ethiopia were running out of manpower. We were hoping that the Ottomans were out of manpower too, because before this war they were fighting the Golden Horde. We had to keep fighting because there really wasn't anyone else left that could keep contesting the Ottomans. The Ottomans had defeated us, and I was told by Ethiopia to just leave the war, as there was no point in me fighting any longer. We had to get stronger if we wanted to face the Ottomans once again. So I brokered a deal with Timurids, who is also afraid of the Ottoman expansion. He gave me the island of Hormuz, which in this mission tree gives us an additional plus one artillery fire on top of the plus one artillery fire that we already have in our ideas. I have to do this to you, my poor Ethiopia. <laughs> Ethiopia was bankrupt and was being played by a sub anyways, so that sub player ended up leaving and I continued to vulture. That was what I was this game, I was just a vulture. Such a big name. I think, no, Golden Hordes might be bigger. Ottomans are a menace, I, I said it, I said it. He's just standing there, menacingly! Oh no, Portugal is being attacked. We need we need more navy here in case he tries to go for this again. Ottomans not wanting us to keep that plus one artillery fire bonus attacked for Hormuz, but his galley fleet got demolished by my heavy ship fleet. But 
He wasn't done there as he pushed through the center of Africa and now was contesting me in Western Africa. This time I was alone one versus one against the Ottomans. Despite having less discipline, I was doing about the same damage as the Ottoman troops, which was a sign of how powerful our artillery fire bonuses actually were. Spain had just finished his war with Italy. However, he was still in a bad position and needed to recover. However, his colonies came to our aid. Since Hormuz was holding and it was the war goal, we were able to start stab hitting for max money against the Ottomans. The Ottomans accepted the first stab hit that I sent, but I had a feeling that this war was not over. The Ottomans declared a truce break war, this time for a better war goal that wasn't on an island. But at the same time, I fired military reforms, giving us 20% morale in our entire army. Once again, it was me and some of Spanish's colonies against the number one power in the lobby. Buff. I can't micro fast enough. Look. Yeah, I can't. I actually can't move fast enough. Hey. That's not the original. Easy. Send piece. Like multiplayer, send piece, send piece. I, I I can't. I got I lost both my can stacks. GG. Send piece. It's kind of an Oh wait, no or moves. The Ottoman player had managed to stack wipe two of my cannon stacks using a forbidden tech of the last patch. It's time for me. To start doing the same thing. Well, I do have to clarify for maybe the new viewers. In the previous patch before domination, there was a really annoying bug that you could do by overstacking very heavily. You could just randomly just full stack wipe an army. Yes, it was a really annoying bug, and I'm very happy that Paradox fixed it in the latest DLC and patch. After seeing a big chunk of the Ottoman army stack wiped by bug abuse, the Timurids had attacked the Ottoman player and now he was overwhelmed on all sides. No, because we have kebab sauce and then we have garlic sauce. I'm coming for your capital, Smeev. <laughs> I think it's already been taken, I think. Uh, it has no out of me. I'm going into a tunnel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, oh no, dude, I hate it when I play EU4 and I go through a tunnel. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Ottomans were defeated and with that the campaign was over. <laughs> Pretty bad way to end a campaign, honestly. But uh, this one was a bit boring and wasn't really the most engaging campaign for people around the world. Yes, the Ottomans player was also the host of this game, so that's why the game disconnected when he said he was going through a tunnel. Anyways, to conclude, were we a grey large mammal of this lobby? The elephant? Uh, not really. Maybe if the game went another hundred years, we would have been way too powerful. And that's it. I'm never gonna do this strategy ever again. I'd rather have colony players. I missed having my little colonial buddies, and this strategy is uh, too sweaty for me. Thank you for watching guys, that's the end of this video. 
Don't forget to check out my Twitch stream if you're watching today on the 19th of August. Very cool special event uh, having planned today. And of course, we got to thank the patrons. From top patrons to lowest, thank you Lumina, Leonard Craig. By the way, Leonard Craig requested a Ming campaign since he's at that tier and I'm playing Ming because of him. Amir, Fluxy, Anderson Pina, Chogos, Mason Andruska, Rasvidias, Slayus, RVR, Will, Bion, Fabulous Snail, Hassium, Tonics, Henning Ballmark, and Zorovia. Thank you all for supporting this channel, and if you want to directly support this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description.